why do we have the pepsin? Well, a lot of these enzymes we're talking are coming from the foods themselves. Uh, number one, the stomach doesn't secrete pepsin. Number two, it secretes sodium bicarbonate. That's the major point that, that uh, we're going to differ on The sec this. secretion of, 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 of the sodium bicarbonate is to, to the intestine and not to the stomach. No, sodium bicarbonate, it's like, it's like a car. The car uses energy. It creates a waste product. It's called carbon monoxide. Now, if the car's not running because it's run out of gas, you don't go, oh, we're low in carbon monoxide. You know, that's a necessary function of, of that car. Let's put more carbon monoxide in the car. The point I'm trying to make is, is pepsin and hydrochloric acid has no purpose in the human body whatsoever other than as a waste product of cellular breakdown from the food itself or from the fact the stomach is trying to raise the pH, which it has to be, ideally, to a pH of 8.4, to be biologically and functionally structured into a healthy embryonic stem cell in the crypts of the small intestine. Nutrients aren't absorbed there, okay? Digestion doesn't take place there, so the idea you need probiotics and bacteria to break those things down, this is, this is silliness. This is scientific, Silliness. The bottom line is the, the small intestine and the stomach do not digest food. And all of these ideas that are in the books need to be, we have to take a magic eraser and literally a rewrite the whole thing, erase them out, and define what's really happening. Now, let's put all that aside for a minute. Let's just say for a minute, well, okay, that makes sense, but does it work? Because people are taking enzymes and they're not getting relief. People are taking probiotics and they're not getting relief. People are doing what I'm telling them to do and they're getting results. Not 50%, not 60%, 100%. Everybody that follows my direction on alkalizing reverses their stomach indigestion, reverses their nausea, reverses any inflammatory, acute or chronic condition of their alimentary canal. Why? Because it addresses the foundation of what I've talked about is the number one cause of all sickness and disease and that's the overacidification. Hydrochloric acid, pepsin and all the other amylase and what have you, all the other enzymes which are products of the food themselves or byproducts of the production of trying to produce alkalinity, you know, you just don't put these back in the body. If you chew your food well, if you don't chew your food well, or if you're sick, we say, look, don't use your energy. Buy a blender. Blend your food, okay? Blend it, because the body can use that. You know, the body can use it, and in that particular form. But it cannot use partially undigested food. It just won't work. And you could take any food, eat a lot of it, and follow and look at what comes out of you. It's going to come out the same way that it went in. So what good is pepsin? What good is hydrochloric acid? I've had, I've had meat sitting in hydrochloric acid for weeks. You know what happens? Nothing. It doesn't break down anything. I could soak it in pepsin. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. You cannot break down the fiber, this fibrous food. And this is the reality of it. You can do your own experiment, okay? You cannot liquefy these foods, and the stomach's main purpose then is, as I've mentioned before, is to provide an environment that's conducive to raise the pH. So when food goes in the stomach, the pH doesn't go down. It goes up naturally. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's secreting sodium bicarbonate. And this is where all of my critics, you know, they don't know what they're talking about. Because number one, I'm not just a scientist, I'm a clinician. I'm actually doing what I'm saying. And we're doing it on live people. And it's working. And that's hard to argue with. 